Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Now, the idea of personality temperament podcasts is not to generalise people's behaviours, but to enable us to understand ourselves and those around us. We're all a blend of four different types of temperaments. We have one or two, maybe being the most dominant ones. Every human has a personality type and temperament. Did you ever think to ask questions like this, based on personality information? Hmm, who should I marry? Who should I hire to work for me? And who should I work for? Probably not. However, now that you know more about type and temperament, you realise that this information plays a key role in relationships in every part of your life. It doesn't mean that you use it as a reason to not marry that person, or hire them, or work for someone but it's more to help you build onto the relationships that you have with these people. When talking business and thinking about team building, you'll be better equipped to understand and work out how your placement of staff is not only at their skill level, but how they fit into the workplace. For example, if you have two people who are real hotheads and they're outspoken and they're loud and they think that their way is the only way, and you put them together on a job, how do you actually think that project would go? Or if you ask the person who's the quietest person in the group who hates public speaking to become the communications director for the department. Or if you put someone who's outgoing and excitable and loves to do many different jobs into the accountant department. Now these are scenarios where you can use your understanding of personalities to start looking at who fits the job and what gives them the most energy and uses a skill set that they already have. Understanding personality can really help you when you want to put people into roles that naturally shine, be happy, and work well with other people. I'm Kate Mason, and welcome to Parenting and Personalities. This is the podcast that connects you to the ones you care about the most. As mentioned in a previous podcast, the Greek physician Hippocrates first wrote about the temperaments, and in later years, physician Galen further developed the theory that is now used today. The four temperaments are as follows. The choleric, which was discussed last month, so go back and have a listen if you want to. The phlegmatic, the melancholic, and today we're looking at the sanguine in the workplace. Now let's talk about the popular sanguine. They're the social butterflies of life, and very often an integral part of an organisation. They're the most outgoing of the four temperaments. One of our best employees was a popular sanguine, and we still talk about her gift for working with people today. She would come into work with so much energy, laughter, and love for the children and the parents and staff. She was a hit with everyone, and she worked the floor. However, she never tidied up after herself. She was always on the back foot when it came to being neat and tidy. She had great plans and ideas, and they came to fruition. However, the problem was that the people that cleaned up the chaos behind her we're not happy. And even to this day, we realise that if you do have a popular sanguine in the workplace, that the people who are fixing up the trail of mess that the sanguine can leave in their path need to know and understand personality types to stop them getting bitchy and resentful. Because nothing can be done to ease this if the sanguine who caused it has no idea and the staff who are left with it do not know how to handle the sanguine. So we need to know, if you have a popular sanguine around the workplace, educate everyone about their temperaments, their behaviours, and discuss how people can get along without feeling used. Otherwise, you'll have this shining star who's surrounded by resentment and anger. Our sanguine left, and it was only when we saw the whole picture did we realise what an impact her behaviours had on our workplace. So as a sanguine or the manager or a boss, please take note. Now, sanguines love interacting with other people and building relationships, and they're usually very sociable. And in a workplace, this is really beneficial because they're very much into being part of the team and helping others. Now, the popular sanguine has a high level of enthusiasm and energy, and this is really contagious and often contributes to that positive vibe that you have in the workplace. Sanguines are adaptable and flexible and usually handle change well, and they can be a real asset when things are constantly in that flux of change. Due to their social nature, they'll usually enjoy working collaboratively with others and approaching challenges with a positive mindset. 
They're very effective in communication, conveying ideas and motivating others and solving communication problems with their very open, positive dialogue. Sanguins have many friends and they actually find it easy to make more. Now, the really great part about this is because they're easygoing, cheerful and nice to be around, they're often really well liked. However, sadly, as always, there is a downside to our personalities, which is a bummer because things were looking so good. Sometimes our strengths become our weaknesses. Here it is. The popular sanguines don't really love routine. They like to be in an environment that's constantly changing. They can find paperwork really boring and painstakingly detailed, and the fact that they actually have to sit and pay attention to it is really draining for them. They don't like being told what to do or a bureaucracy where people might have them doing jobs that they dislike. They can also sometimes lack empathy and an understanding of a really deep emotional situation where being bright, chirpy and happy might not actually be the right countenance in the workplace. They dislike sadness, anger and other deeper emotions that can come into play. Life isn't fun if these emotions are constantly in their face and at their workplace. And they can be really disorganised. They really just mostly enjoy having fun and have people telling them how great they are. They're not good at keeping deadlines and they can be chronically late, a little forgetful, and they love shiny new things. When something new and exciting comes into play, they'll often forget to finish the tasks or jobs that they might have set for them during the day and follow the excitement of that latest shiny object. I should know. I'm a total popular sanguine. When my husband Paul and I took the Personality Plus questionnaire, we both came out 38 out of 40 questions in two totally different temperaments. I was the popular sanguine and he was the powerful choleric. This discovery was a relationship game changer. Learn about the powerful choleric on my choleric podcast. Now I love working with people. I'm best placed in customer service or surrounded by people where I can joke and laugh and have fun. Otherwise, I do get bored. Now, the perfect personality workplace storm happened many years ago when my mum, who was our bookkeeper, went on holidays. Now, before she went, she prepped everything. She had a list written for me of how to start the computer because, believe me, back then, the computer was a huge object on your desk and it was really hard to start. We didn't have computers in our home. They were dinosaurs compared with today. So my skill set was next to nothing around a computer. I sat in the office all alone and I started to look at my list and started to do the pays. Now the best part was, after an hour, somebody came in and started talking to me. I was so excited. I chatted to them for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I got back to the payroll. I spent another long, boring hour on it and then sent it off. Now that afternoon, I found out that I'd overtaxed all 40 part-time employees. My name was Mud. Nobody, I mean nobody, spoke to me for a couple of weeks. Now I resolved, as of that moment, that I would actually never do any of that kind of work again. I never have. I was too stressed. I didn't like being locked away. And I'm a much better front runner on reception in our business than sitting in an office. Now, this doesn't mean that every sanguine will be like me. If you relate to the popular sanguine profile and you love going to work because it's fun and you love being with people, make sure you are in a job that fills these needs. If you're a sanguine working in office space similar to my situation and your stress levels are high, then you might not be in the right job for you. Ensure that you love your job and it meets your needs. Please be aware of your shortcomings because even though none of us really like looking at our weaknesses versus our strengths, it's an important part of self-awareness. When our strengths become our weaknesses and popular sanguines don't often stick to the job at hand, we're easily distracted and don't follow through. So awareness of this and work to intend to flex that personality muscle in those areas in order to show those things can be done even while you're having fun. Think about how you could possibly incorporate strategies into your work that would help you stay on task. So maybe keep your deadlines planned in advance. Leave your house 10 minutes earlier. Don't leave jobs until the very last minute. 
because finishing things is really important. Find people who help you to finish things and understand that when someone's frustrated with your lateness or your carelessness, that you can do something about it and you need to. Put habits into place that really help manage your time and concentration. Now, if you're employing a sanguine, make sure that they're in the best role in your workplace or your business. Get curious. Ask questions. Would you like to be in a more extroverted situation where you're able to help and talk to people? What makes you happy? Where would your favourite job be in the company? Even when they are in their perfect job, this doesn't mean that you won't need to chase them up on the less fun activities on their shift, because unfortunately, you will. They'll get lost in their conversations and the fun of being with people, and they'll need re-diverting gently back to the job at hand. The popular sanguine is not going to be your person with amazing self-control who will constantly be looking at their job list or stay focused for long periods of time. You'll need another personality type for that. They are, however, great for business and will be a huge draw card for your clients. Now, life is all about having a good time, but so is working to your full potential and being able to do things that are not actually your favourite things to do. Hopefully, I'm not making the popular sanguine sound too airheaded as I am one, and I don't think I'm an airhead. Although we can appear to be this to other temperaments, the sanguine is, as all personalities are, a valuable asset to the workplace if placed in the right position. I've been talking about the full sanguine temperament. When the sanguine is combined with a choleric, they can be outspoken, quick decision makers who need things finished yesterday, and believe me, they will tell you about it. If they're a sanguine melancholic blend, they'll be able to focus more on having fun as well as concentrating on completing their work in detail. If they're a sanguine phlegmatic blend, then they'll be really relaxed and happy and might need some direction to get them into work mode. I hope that you have a greater understanding of the popular sanguines in your life. Start looking. You'll see them everywhere. Next time we'll be talking about the perfect melancholic. You'll find a link to the book Personality Plus by Florence Litter and the online test for temperaments in the show notes. I'm Kate Mason. Thank you for listening to Parenting and Personalities. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you could leave a rating and a review that would help others learn about this podcast. If you're interested in discovering more about you and your family's personality types, you'll find my book, Who Is This Monster or Treasure in My House, on Booktopia or Amazon. If you have an episode idea, please send a note to the personality coach at gmail.com. Many thanks to our producers at Stories and Strategies, and we'll see you next time. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.